Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's Jesse here from BC Fishing Journal, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Typically, I would take you out on one of my fishing adventures, tell a bit of the story of the day, but today is more a, this is more a response to a lot of questions I've been getting on the channel, particularly around the ones of my kayak here. So they've been asking, you know, what sort of gear do I use? What's your setup? And so today is just that. I'm just going to address that. I'm going to start from the front to back. I've set up my kayak completely how I would set it up if I was about to take it on the water right now. And uh, so I'm just going to walk you through it. Now, I'm not going to go through in this video all like, you know, my rod, my reel, those type of things. I'm just going to go through the, the kind of the main things of the kayak. And additionally, I want to share how much things cost. So each accessory, everything on here, I'm going to outline the cost in Canadian, which I've spent in Canadian. You've been watching this channel and you want to know how my setup is. This is the video for you. Stick around. All right, here we go. So first things first. This is a Old Town Salty PDL 120 and basically that is a 12 foot kind of a pedal drive kayak. So I pedal there, it, it's, you can see down here, that's how it gets me moving here. So there's no electric motor or anything like that when I'm cruising along. It's all uh, my, powered by my own legs here. So. And I have nicknamed her or called her the Hokey Dinah. And so if you've watched any of my videos, you've often heard me yelling, Hokey Dinah! This is a big fish. Hokey Dinah. Hokey Dinah. I can't believe that. Shoot, yes. It is a salmon. Hokey Dinah. I've had some people comment, ask like, what does that even mean? So um, it's just a funny phrase that I've always, I've heard my grandfather say, my dad say, and now I often say it whenever I'm excited or in a lot of different things. So anyway, she is the Hokey Dinah. All right. Okay, starting from the very front of the bow of the boat here, we have a little uh, Pelican, um, just a simple kayak handle here. So this is just attached. This um, I bought, the reason why I buy this is when I'm pulling this up, you know, on some really steep rocks or, you know, anything, any beach or even just a steep ramp for that matter, it's kind of awkward to pull up like this. I'd rather have the angle my angle of my wrist like this and then pull it, it's easier to get a little more torque. So I, I bought this so I could just do that. So here there's no storage. I rarely use this. Uh, this is just, yeah, I don't even, I barely, I don't have any, any use for this right now. So one of the most important things uh, on a kayak is the track. Now I replaced my track. So this is a aluminum uh, custom made one by Pacific Yak Angler and that's local. These guys are local here on the island and they make these for uh, these old town kayaks and this has been a game changer. I This has been one of the best uh, things to add to my kayak really just for solidifying all my accessories. All my accessories. It's made them way better. But yeah, so I got them on both sides. So here are the plastic ones that initially came here. I took these off and the reason being was you can see I can I can bend those. So you can imagine if you have some weight like a you know something like your downrigger or something that has some serious torque. After a while these things they, they start to bend a little bit and there's even um, you can see I don't know if you can see that but there is a there's some damage to it and that's just from the inside so these these gunnels I'll take this off here. This is a Scotty gunnel mount, and this is what I've been using to hold my uh, my downrigger. So it just pops in like that. Now, I love that there is a downrigger that just can pop in really simply, but this thing sits in here in these tracks. And these, these little square bolts, or rectangle bolts, I forget what they're called, that's what kind of holds it in there. So after on, these pl on this plastic, and when, once it starts wearing like this, I've noticed that this gets really torn up. So you can see that, that's what happens there. There's that little bit of damage and then they, I've actually had these things pop right off and so I am actually was not happy with this because look at this thing versus let me get another one here while I'm talking now I'm going to take off this uh, yak attack one over here too this is the one that was holding my rod holder I'm just going to twist these loosen them up and I can slide them out of there okay so look at the difference of the bolts the t-bolts here I'm going to put it on this table here for a look at the difference I think if you can't see that, look at how thick these ones are and look how thin these are. So the reason why I mention that is that these are perfectly in line with the track and there's no way they're coming off and getting loose like that. There's no way. They just physically can't do it because there's not the space. Like they cannot come out of that, that track line there. But these ones can. And so they, they've popped right out. Sometimes if they're not perfectly 
uh, perpendicular to the the track line, some, some sort of curved a little bit, they can pop out of there. And I've had that actually happen. I've lost gear. That happened to me one time. So, oh, jeez. Oh, no. Shoot. Oh, well, I just lost my, wow. I just lost my whole tin rod holder. That's a, that's a, wow. Okay, well, that's a shame. A good start to the day out there. I just lost my rod holder. It just popped right off the thing, the clip and everything. But anyway, that's why I like these ones better. There's a bunch of different manufacturers that do it. Navarre has one now. It's like a universal one. Um, there, This is, again, this is the Yak Attack one. And I really like this one, personally. And also because of the extra quick clip that comes out of this. So anyway, Scotty, I love Scotty stuff. I got a bunch of their stuff, obviously. It's really great. But their uh, gunnel, I think you need a bigger, they need bigger brackets. That's just my two cents. Anyway, okay, I talked a lot about that. So I've pulled off, uh, what did I pull off here? So I pulled off... Uh, this is my uh, downrigger. This is. I'm gonna say the downrigger is okay. I I think I I think I'm gonna look at some other options in the future, but it does the trick. It's okay. When it's, it's a lot. It's not easy to kind of torque and manage the line. You kind of have to do two things at once a little bit with this. Uh, you're playing with you know you're playing with this screw a lot, loosening and tightening it, and then uh, you know it's just finding the right balance. One. I run a five pound cannonball on on that guy. One thing on these lake trollers is they come with a cable and uh, I forget how many feet it comes with, like a hundred feet or something like that, of this thick cable wire. And I really, really don't like it. It hums, it, uh, it has more drag in the water. And so what most people are typically doing is swapping out the cable and putting on a braided line. So you can see that line there. This is a 200 pound, or I put, Quite a bit on there anyway more than i would ever need to use so yeah highly recommend if you're gonna use that downrigger get rid of the cable right away okay so we got those now what else we got here okay so here's my uh yak attack this is just uh my camera boom as you can see so this is the panfish pro camera mount if you if you're doing any filming or uh photography on your camera like you can you can spin this around however you want to do it you can lift it up forward down so you can uh, you can twist this guy too and so that can, you can change your camera angle like there. So it's completely maneuverable uh, wherever I want to put the camera, which is pretty nice actually. So this is a very nice, nice thing. This is just a little, you know, base, a little my track base here. Get out of there. There it is. So you can see that, that T-bolt there again. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, so I pulled off that uh, track base and this is the, uh, I had a rod holder here. So this is the, what is this called? This is the... Zuka 2. It's like a bazooka. It kind of looks like a bazooka. But it's again, this is from Yak Attack. There's an 8 inch um, arm extender there as well. And this has been good. So it's got a different sort of entry. So you can turn that around. So depending on if you're running a casting reel or a spinning rod or different types of, you know, reels, uh, this can has it has proper holders like just to store, like, you know, to really lock in your, your reel into the holder. So I really like this one. I thought it's been really good for what I'm using it for. So very happy with that. So I'll put that one down there. And the last thing on my gear tracks. So again, the last thing on the gear tracks is my electronics. So this is a Garmin four striker. Actually, this is the new, um, this is the uh, vivid one. So this is the step up. So it's a little bit bigger. This is a Scotty universal fish finder. So it just connects right on there with a screw. And then on top of this is, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a the way it's mounted. I'm gonna take it off actually. If I screw this off. This is kind of a cool one-stop shop. It does the fish finder and it also has this connector to hold my uh, transducer, which is awesome. So I can pull it up and down. I can adjust my transducer however I need to. A lot of people put their transducers underneath, but because I'm, again, because I'm doing car topping, it's always on top. Uh, I just didn't want to damage the transducer. It didn't make sense to put it under there because it's going to take a lot of wear and tear and hit. It might even damage it. So, um, plus it's less wiring. So I I can just put it all right here. And so this just pops off with. Again, let's just slide this down. Okay, so you can see there again. There's the T bolt. The Garmin Four uh, is an awesome fish finder, by the way. If you're just starting off, for the price point and what you're getting, awesome.
Oh, there's a lot of salmon here. Look at this. Okay, that's good marks here, guys. Uh, so the wiring to get power for the Garmin. So here's the, the power cord here. And it goes into a little hole right in here. So this is where I did a little bit of custom work and this is the only thing, the only hole I've drilled in my kayak. Beautiful. So this is a, uh, a Hobie through hole uh, cord. This is just a little setup where it has this little clamp, uh, a little seal, a little rubber seal here. And, um, and what it basically does is it allows the cord to come inside into the waterproof section of the kayak. So if I pull off this guy and the wiring comes through here. So here's the power. So there it is. So it connects the two. So there's the wiring right there. And since I'm here right now, maybe I'll just outline. So that little strip, I don't know how well you can see that. I saw this on another YouTube video. Um, he put some heavy duty Velcro. So this is some just from Velcro there. And what I've done is I'm just going to grab my, here's my battery. So what I do is I put the other piece of that Velcro right. I just stuck it right on, on here. So here it is. So what I do is I just put it right in here like that and that, and then that heavy duty Velcro just holds the battery right in place. And then I can wire it up. No problem. Just connect the, the adapters there and I'm good. I'm golden. And this, this has been really stable. So I've never had a problem with this ever falling out or unsticking from the Velcro. It's really, really solid. So that's been a good option. Coming back to the battery here, this Dakota lithium battery, 12 volt uh, 10 app has been amazing. This is such a good battery. Uh, this lasts me at least two trips. So um, it's been fantastic. So I usually charge it after the second trip. And that's so I'm thinking like eight to 12 hours um, of, of usage. And I haven't really maxed it out. And this is the, the, the charger that you can buy separately. And I actually highly recommend this. This just makes it really simple. It's a Dakota lithium charger. It's meant for this. Um, yeah, really highly recommend that. Just put it somewhere. Uh, so every time you're done with your process of, you know, taking, unloading everything, it's just right beside where you would drop off your battery. You just charge it and it's ready for the next time. It charges really quick. Highly recommend. Very good. So I've got an extra little uh, piece of velcro, and I got this extra gear. So if there, I ever run into any incidents, this is a waterproof bag. But again, there's that velcro piece that's sticking. So I've got some extra uh, straps for the car. I've got a extra propeller. So if I lose my propeller or have it damaged on my PDL, that's an extra one of those. I got this from Navarre, by the way. Navarre has some, a bunch of extra products, which are really cool. This is a propeller uh, nut, so this kind of holds the propeller on. So there's an extra one of those. This thing floats, so if you ever drop one in the ocean or in water. I got some extra uh, bolts. So this is the rudder bolt. So I, I up, upgraded my rudder bolt. Um, with the Navarre one, it's a little bit different setup, a little bit tighter. So yeah, these are just some extra pieces. So if I have anything else, maybe some emergency kit stuff might be not a bad idea in here too. Like I got some rope in here uh, that you can't see. I've got you know, stuff like that. That would be a good place to put it where it's waterproof. Okay, just a few things. So this is, as I've mentioned, this is the PDL. So this is what drives and propels my uh, my boat. Now this isn't the these aren't the pedals that come with it. These are the typical pedals that come with it. They're um, they're actually not bad. Like I mean, depending on what you're using for it. But uh, they're, the reason why I swapped them out was I found that my foot was slipping. But yeah, so I swapped it out for just a cheap. I uh, found these on Amazon. I think I heard, saw them recommended by a few other anglers. And it's just got these little. Um, grippy things, which you can remove actually, if you don't want to have these little grippy things on there, you don't have to have them, but this has been great. And I matched the color with the kayak, which is kind of nice. It gives that same sort of, yeah, it just looks cool. Anyway, I've really liked these. So my feet aren't slipping. And a lot of times, I don't know if you notice this, but my feet were make the, the, the sound of my flip flops on these would, would squeak. And so if for, as a, as a YouTuber, you hear this squeak, 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 and it's just kind of irritating if you're watching a, sh a video on this guy, every time he's paddling, it's like, anyway, I was like, okay, I'm getting rid of those. All right. So the PDL, there's also some storage in here. So there I've got, I usually keep my VHF radio, which is, this is great. So if I ever need to get a hold of Coast Guard, if I have any real big issues, I always have this on me, which is great. Um, but I've got my licenses in here. I keep all my licenses. So when you kill a fish that you need to mark it down or anything like that. 
Uh, everything's in here in a little waterproof bag. And then I keep all my terminal tackle, some terminal tackle, like some little clips and things I use on the downrigger. So I also usually keep snacks um, and a, anything that I just need quick access to just right in there. Okay, what else can I move down here? Okay, let's keep moving down the line here. So this is not the knob that came with it. So this is how I steer my rudder, how I steer the boat, right? Or steal it. And uh, in the past, there's a, the one that comes, the stock one is this gray ball and it's got a little tensor uh, tightening bolt. So you can really tighten up where you're moving to or when you move this, it stays in that position. This is an upgrade, I think. It's Navar um, steering, I forget what they're called, but uh, it's been really good. I've liked this. I like the handle on it a lot better than the, just a single round ball. I like the, the point and uh, I found that with the new rudder bolt too, it really holds in spot in place really well. Okay, very important uh, feature, which I have barely had to use, but here is my paddle. This is a Pelican uh, paddle that I bought from Canadian Tire. And uh, so when you buy a kayak, you probably won't get one of these, but you will get something that holds it in place. So this little handle um, that just pops off this thing here, that will come with the kayak, obviously, but this does not. So I had to buy that. And um, you know, if you have any issues with your PDL, obviously you have to have some way to get home. So this is important. Or even in really rough waters, I've used this. The only time I've actually had to use this was in really rough waters. I can use it as a stabilizer. So, uh, you know, just touching down, you know, while I'm pedaling home, it's uh, not a bad option. One of the nice things about the seat is there's a huge amount of storage under here. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's it's just kind of a, a mesh storage section and you can actually put quite a bit in here. There's a little bit of a gap thing here, but it encloses it quite nicely on the side so it can't roll out the side. So the only opening is right here so it can only fall forward. And I usually keep in here, I'll use my measuring tape. Um, this is a, a fish lip uh, gripper. You know, you can probably see me help hold a few fish like that. All right, using that guy. Bonker, always fun to use, bing. And um, what else have I put? I've got a, uh, yeah, so if I've got a stringer, I haven't used this. This is be for more like your big lingcod or something like fish you want to drag behind. Um, yeah, if you need to put any fish on a stringer that don't fish don't fit in my typical soft, as you've seen in the back, typically I have a soft cooler, something like this. This is like a soft cooler. And there's lots of different options out there. Uh, inside here, it's got the, the material that keeps it all nice and cool. I usually toss some ice or a nice couple ice packs in there. This is a new guy. Um, it's a little bit bulky, but this is kind of a nice way to uh, measure your fish real quickly on the kayak without, you know, if you, especially if you need to get the fish back in the water. You don't want to be playing around with them too much. Okay, still moving back. So here we go. Then we're moving back into the middle of the boat now. This is the Wilderness Systems um, mesh bag and just goes right on the back of your seat there. So you can put like lunch foods. Usually I put most of my snacks up front, but if I have some bigger things I can put in there, um, that's great. This is also a pretty important thing. This is a uh, this is the wilderness rod leash. So this just clips onto my, my rod. So if I've ever flipped, then the rods come flying out. At least I won't lose my rod and reel, my expense. So this will always be attached to my more expensive setups. So this is the Pelican kayak cart. So this is pretty important actually. So the nice thing about this thing is super light. I don't have to di disassemble it. Some of these bigger ones, uh, you have to disassemble them, take off the wheels and blah, 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 all that stuff when you get on the water. Um, the nice thing about this too is actually if I slide this back is this, these little uh, holes in the, in the kayak here allows the water to drain out these drain holes. These actually, this can just fit right in there. So it kind of holds it, um, in, in place, which is awesome. So this is what it looks like. So pretty simple, pretty cheap. Um, because the tires are, you know, this is just, these These are not inflatable. They're, um, they can be not great on if you're going where big rocks or if you're, if you got some gnarly, you know, trailering needs or if you had to get down to the water, it's pretty tough. All in all, I'm actually really happy with that, especially for the price point. I've been very, very happy. And the the best thing I like about this again is just how it transports while I'm on the water. When I'm taking this on the water, it doesn't, it's, it's a little bit better. Here's an example of one that's a little, a little bit more work. So here's a, this is a very nice, beautiful 
Uh, beautiful trailer in one, but look at, so if I got to go over with anything, this is, these are inflatable wheels. If I need to go, um, you know, over some gnarly terrain and I had to tow it over that, this is the, this is the one, but then you have to disassemble this and then, you know, put that into your, into your, uh, back of your kayak while you're, you know, it's just a lot of work and a lot of space. So I'm looking for this, the lightest, uh, smallest thing. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, and last but not least, this is a milk crate. This is a 13 by 13 milk crate with inside of it is the Plano uh, kayak soft case. So this was, um, I got this on sale for like half price. It's awesome. It's just a soft case that just naturally fits right into the 13 by 13 milk crate. So in my soft case here, I was mentioning all my gear. So I'll have like flashers in there and uh, I wrap up all my uh all my gear in big Ziploc bags here just to uh, help prevention, uh, saltwater prevention. So there's all my blue leader lines. They're all pre-tied obviously. And uh, I keep, again, yeah, them all in this, these Ziploc bags. The way I keep this thing kind of solidified, I use basically these bungees to, there's a, it comes with the boat that keeps it all strapped down. I also have an extra one, a thicker one, a really thick one, kind of a safety cord, like if I ever did dump. So I've attached it right there and I, I'll wrap it around my seat and I'll just twist it and, and connect it there. So if I ever do flip this thing, uh, may, maybe I'll lose some of the gear, but I won't lose everything, right? Because this is just a milk crate, you can customize and do whatever the heck you want. So I just got some PVC pipe from uh, Home Depot, slap these two on there with a couple of clamps. And this is where I hold extra rods. So if I want to put some extra rods, they just stick right in there. Perfect. Um, in here you'll see I've got my uh, fish descender if I'm fishing for rockfish uh, I've got a couple fish descenders this is a, a little two pound ball with some line on this side what do we got over here usually I keep all my extra terminal gear like hooks leader lines um, oh yeah, just all my this is my term terminal gear and uh, yeah we got some extra line in there we got some 40 pound fluorocarbon we probably have some 30 pound in there too and then yeah, just extra a lot of little extra things like you know little clips and things like that now if you have seen my videos you will notice that there's a rod holder here there's a rod holder here and there's a rod holder over here so on the right hand side i like to have my my um uh net my long fishing net which is actually where are you fishing net oh here it is right here it's this guy right here so this is the one i put over there it's a big beckman and uh, it's a bit of a beast, but I like the long one because like, man, especially if you got these long leaders, like look at that, look at how high that is. It, it gives a little visibility, kind of acts like a safety thing too. So, you know, that's not a bad option to have. Uh, I like the big long uh, fishing nets actually on the kayak, to be honest with you. So it just gives you a better chance to net those fish, especially if they're just out of arm's reach. So, you know, we're down like a bottom fishing rod and a trolling rod. Oh, and I can be swapping back and forth. And that's usually what I do. And if I have a few extra rods there than that, then I'll just put them back in here. Okay, just quickly over here, just some plastic uh, straps that I use to strap my kayak onto my, um, my car. Basically, I just use two, front and the back. It's, it's been pretty easy to, I haven't had any issues with it sliding. My, my, I think this kayak has been perfect for that. Um, here's my PFD. This is the Chinook by NRS. It's an awesome, awesome, um, highly recommend, uh, something like this. They, this is the older model. So I got this on spec on sale. Um, but they're not that expensive. I got a little, um, you know, a safety knife here. If I have any issues, I get wrapped up in some line or anything, uh, I need to cut right away. This is super, uh, super great little blade. He just pops right out and you got a blade right away. So that's important. So that's on your PFD. I've got my uh, pliers now attached, as you have seen. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to attach, reattach those pliers. This is a really good one. This might be it. Oh, shoot. No, I have pliers. No. Oh. So, yeah, these these PFDs are really great. They're, they're, they're comfortable to use. They got a lot of extra. I put my, my phone in, in here. It's a nice thing to put your phone while you're, you know, you're fishing. It can just use a hook file. I got a knife to bleed the fish in here. Little detail, little things like that, like even things to wipe the camera. It's all just, it's lots of pockets. So it's, it's a great thing to have. The PFD is awesome. So 
very happy with that. I would say invest in a good one of these and make sure it feels comfortable for you too. So this one I really like um, comfort wise. So very happy with that. So, all right. Well, I think that's about it now. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for uh, sticking around here and watching this. And again, if you have any other feedback or any other questions around my gear, by all means, send them my way. Ask me a question. Uh, if you want to email me, it's jesse at bcfishingjournal.com. Happy to respond to any emails that way, too, if you don't want to put it in the public comments. No worries. So, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for coming and sticking around and hanging out with me. I hope this video has been informative or interesting in some way for you guys. We'll see you in the next one.